Well, hello guys, this is Amber with Story Chasing. I've partnered up with Ogo who makes this composting toilet. I'm gonna change out my toilet today, finally. I've had this cassette toilet on my Ram ProMaster van that came with the van. I'm on the second cassette, it's leaking. I can't get it to stop, can't figure out what's going on with it. I figured it's about time to go ahead and get that composting toilet. So here's the thing, I actually researched which was gonna be the best composting toilet for my space. Some of them are too large, they have a very big footprint. Ogo does not, and it's super easy to actually dump the composting materials out of it and the liquids. So I'm excited to show you the installation today. And then after three months, six months, and 12 months, I'm gonna do a review within some vlogging videos that just shows you how everything has been going since I installed it, the pros and cons of it, and everything that I've learned about it since I've had it. I hope you'll stick with me. We're gonna do the installation today and show you just exactly what this thing can do and maybe something that you would want to install in your van, especially because it has a very small footprint. This is future Amber coming to you to interject a few things here with the installation of the Ogo composting toilet. So the very first thing that I had to do was prepare the bathroom for this composting toilet. In my very last video, which I will link at the end of this video in case you haven't seen it, I had to literally tear up my bathroom, completely renovate it, take out the cassette toilet that was leaking in there, and get everything prepped and ready to go to put the Ogo composting toilet in. You're gonna see in just a moment that this toilet is so, so, so simple to install. And I'm gonna take it step by step for you. Right here, I'm gonna show you a quick sneak peek of what it looks like when it's already installed so you can see how beautiful this Ogo toilet is. So much better than what I had before. It's just a minimalist footprint. It has clean lines on it. It's nice and square. It just really works in this bathroom, and I'm gonna give you some reasons why at the end, why I really liked it, the pros, the cons, and the things that I would change about it. Excuse my sweatiness, because we've been working outside in the very humid Florida heat, and it rained today. So one of the great things that Ogo did is they put the vent for the composting toilet and where the hose hooks into um, on the back, corners and you can interchange those depending on your bathroom setup. So I'm going to definitely need to do that. Let me show you why. So because I have a furnace vent right over here, I want my toilet to sit more in line with this box area that you're seeing here, which is where my cassette box actually used to come through. I'm actually going to drill a hole through that door to put the hose. So I want my hose actually to be on this side where the toilet's going to be offset over here a little bit. I want more space on this side so that I can put cleaning products and whatever and also keep this furnace vent from being closed up or anything blocking it. This is the back end of the composting toilet and this is where the hose goes to and it's nice that this swivels so you can have it come out on either side, again, depending on your bathroom setup. And then on this side is the actual vent. This actually sucks air in and the hose will push the air out. Okay, we're gonna try to remove this, pop it out with a flat screwdriver and, and it worked. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try this side now. This side's a little more complicated because it's electric. We popped it loose. I'm gonna shift it over to this side and hopefully just pop it back in over here and then I'll secure the electrical cord Way in a way in. that it's not pinched anywhere. So now we have the hose side over here with the fan on top and the intake on the right side. Right now, uh, Kathy's gonna drill the hole for the hose on the outside compartment of my old cassette door. <laughs> there we have a hole that is really thick so Kathy's cutting the PVC pipe so that we can put that into the exterior vent which also goes into the hose now that the PVC pipe is cut we attach the hose which is gonna be a nice 
tight to fit. Future Amber here again. I'm at my sister's house, which is why you're not seeing me in my van. But I wanted to interject really quickly right here that the PVC pipe was something extra that I had to purchase. The reason why is because the hose that connects to the back of the composting toilet isn't the right fit for the vent. So you have to connect it using a PVC pipe to get the right fit. I wish that was something that they had provided. I had to buy a huge, long PVC pipe for this much PVC pipe to make sure the fitting was proper. It would have been nice if they had added, say, six inches of pipe in there for everybody so they could just cut it themselves or make a hose and a vent that works properly together so that you don't have to use the PVC pipe. So just little things that I found out along the way. She's actually drilling out the holes for the screws for the vent. Last part of the venting box is the screws that mount on the bottom. The bottom, which okay. is very tricky. I'm gonna have to turn the other way. So. <laughs> Sorry, camera. <laughs> so what we're doing now is wiring up the composting toilet to the existing wires that were in the old cassette toilet system. Strip the insulation back a little bit. Sliding it in until it touches the little divot in the middle. I've adjusted this, this vice grip to be the right amount of pressure to tighten it, to crimp it, without breaking the insulation. And I'm tugging on it to test it. Now we're going to actually attach to the power source coming from the van. And we have the power turned off in the van. We have the DC wiring from the van to the composting toilet wiring and now it has to go through that hole which is the back side of the bathroom and then on the inside we'll plug it in. Now we just have to plug it in right next to where the hose outlet is. Truth time, we're gonna see if this works. It's plugged in. This is the button to start the composting mechanism that's right inside here. That's the pail that's inside. Well, we can hear it going. Perfect. It's working! <laughs> I'm really happy about that. <laughs> Thank you, Kathy. All right, we've got the toilet almost done. We've got the hose through the hole through that board right there and the cord for the power cord. Put some black insulation around that hose, which I'll show you from the outside. So from the outside, this is the original cassette door that we've drilled through to put the hose in to vent it. That goes in through this board that I just showed you on the inside. And we didn't want the hose, There's a, this hole was already in this board, so we just reused the board. And because we don't want the hose to scrape against that circle right there, Kathy had this foam that we just put all around it and the cord, so any vibration from the van will not damage that whatsoever. All right, it's time to screw the toilet into the floor now that we've got everything done. Last piece of work. So to make sure that I have the toilet where I want it to be, I put blue tape on each side to make sure it stays straight before I drill the holes. What would be really nice is if this would stay up on its own, but it does tend to slam down sometimes if you're not careful. So we're gonna put the bucket in. It's nice and seated in there. The next is the urine diverter. Now that all of that's in, we just have to put the composting material in and give it a whirl. Another great thing about Ogo is they have these bags already of Coco Core for your composting. It's already separated a bit. You just need to add water. So I'm gonna open that up. I'm gonna show you exactly what we're gonna do with it. So we'll pour this down inside. The 
that's what it looks like when it comes out of the bag and it's dry. We need to add about 24 ounces of water. They give you this little spray container. I just fill this up twice per the instructions. Actually, we need to agitate that. First, we need to hit this button that's right over here to agitate it, get it mixing. And then we're gonna pour our water in. And you're supposed to make sure that it's moist to the touch. So we're just gonna put it on the sides per the instructions. Let that do its thing. We're gonna get one more bottle. Here's the second bottle. Just let it go through its cycle and continue churning. All right, when I touch it, it's definitely moist to the touch. You can see it's kind of sticking to my hands a little bit. It's not dirt like sopping, it's just a little moist, it's perfect. So a couple of things when using it, when you want to go just number one, you're gonna raise the lid of course, you're going to pee over this little section which is the urine diverter, it goes into that hole and collects in the tank below. When you wanna go number two, you open up this valve right here, straight out. I'll show you what it does from here. Straight out. And then your poo goes in there. And then when you're done, you hit the button over here on the side to agitate the compost. Now that button actually lights up red when the urine bottle is full. Mine's gonna be hard because I have it against the wall, but I'll just have to keep checking it. Another great feature that they have for the urine, so it's the urine tank, when you take it out, you'll wanna put the lid on it before you take it out of the box so that you don't spill it on the floor when you're moving it, especially if it's really full. But you wanna take it off to close the door or else it won't close because you have this little contraption right here, which is the actual urine diverter. So we're gonna close this now. This is the final install of my composting toilet and tile. I'm so in love with it. We have one little thing to do right here. I need to find an L-shaped molding to go over this, but otherwise everything is done. So now that you've seen the install of this and how simple it actually is, I want to share with you the things that I really love about it since I've been using it now, and also some things that I would change about it. So the first thing is I'm in love with this toilet. So much better than what I had before. Ogo did an amazing job at putting this thing together and really making it simple to use. I mean, simple to install and also simple to use. There are other toilets out there that require you to basically take the entire toilet outside in order to dump it. This you don't, you just have to pull the pail out and put it in a trash bag. It's so, so easy. Also the urine diverter pulls out very easily. You go dump that in a receptacle of your choosing. Second, it's a very small footprint. It's so much smaller than a lot of the other ones that I've seen out there. When I did all my research, I was like, this is the one. Love how small it is. I love the squareness of it, how it's just super clean lines, saves on space. Thirdly, the reason why I love it is when you're going to the bathroom, one of the questions that I always had is, well, sometimes you have to go number one and number two at the same time. How does the toilet compensate for that? The good news about this, at least for females, I don't know about males yet. No male has peed in my toilet or pooped in my toilet yet. For females, it's really great because you can sit down and the way the diverter is, it's just wide enough so that you can do both at the same time. You just have to open that chute where number two goes into the composting area is open and you just do both at the same time. I love too that it's super easy to clean. Every time I use the bathroom, I use the spray bottle, I spray on it, I clean it off with a wipe or paper towel and throw that in the trash. Now you can use toilet paper in there. I don't personally do that because it just takes up more space and just means I'm gonna have to change the composting more often. I love that you just have to hit one button and everything turns inside the composting toilet when you do number two and you don't have to reach down, grab a handle, turn it yourself manually, none of that. So, so easy. All right, Right, to the things that I'm not so fond about. These are the things that I would like to see changed. One, the lid that pulls up and down in order for you to take the urine diverter out and also take the composting pail out. 
it doesn't stay up on its own all the time. Like sometimes it will, but then sometimes it'll just slam back down and it's a pretty loud sound. And if your hand is caught in there, or you're trying to put something back inside, it's gonna slam down on you. So I've had to use this little bungee cord to kind of keep it up when I'm trying to pull everything out. Like I said, not a game changer. I've just learned to adapt to it. So the button on the right side of the toilet is a two functioning button. One, it tells you if the urine is full and it lights up red. And then second of all, it's a button for you to push so that you can churn the composting in the bin. The placement is great for the composting part, but for the light part that tells you whether or not the urine diverter is full or not, it's hard to see because in the bathroom, that side is kind of near a wall and so you don't always see it unless it's dark outside. So if the bathroom is completely dark and that light is on, I can see it lights up bright red. If it's daylight, I can't see it. So it would be kind of nice if they had that button on the front maybe where you could see it a little bit better. Not a big deal again, but just a little bit of annoyance because you definitely don't want to overflow your urine diverter and pee goes out everywhere. But what I did notice about that on the note of the urine diverter is that the light will come on when it has about this much room left in the urine container for you to use. One night the light came on in the middle of the night and I was like, oh my God, I'm not gonna go outside to go put the urine outside if I don't have to. So I looked inside really quick with my flashlight I'm like, all right, I still have a lot of room and I probably urinated four more times and it still wasn't completely full. So it gives you plenty of warning that that thing is getting full so that you can go toss it. Speaking of where things are located, so the pull mechanism that you use to open up the trap to the composting is on the front right corner. I understand they might have had to place it there just because of the mechanics of how something opens and closes. So when you're sitting down on the toilet, your right leg actually touches that mechanism and sometimes we'll kind of push it in just a tiny bit, not all the way, but I just noticed that it doesn't stay completely out if my leg is touching it. So just something to be aware of. For taller people, you might be able to kind of raise your thigh off of that. I'm short, so I can't. <laughs> I would like to see that place somewhere else because I am a little bit concerned that over time, having my leg up against that could weaken the structure of that plastic and break it off. But it feels really sturdy, so it doesn't feel like it's gonna break on me like right now. Overall, I really love that toilet and such a big difference. It's like, I don't have to worry about those leaks anymore from the Ketset toilet. I don't have to worry about where I'm going to go dump it because with the composting, you can put it in a biodegradable trash bag and throw it out. So it's just a game changer for me. Love it, I'm glad I did it. And by the way, the woman's voice that you're hearing in the video, her name is Kathy. For some reason, I didn't introduce her into this video, but she was in the video as well when I was actually renovating the bathroom. So Kathy, thank you so much for helping me with this install for the composting toilet, for the renovation of the bathroom. So if you're looking into a composting toilet, I highly suggest getting the Ogo composting toilet. I'm gonna provide a link down below for you to click on so that you can see all of the information about Ogo and see if it's right for you. And if it is, then you can purchase from them directly. And by the way, I'm still using this and getting used to it, but if you have any questions that I haven't answered in this video, go ahead and leave those comments below and I'll get to them just as quickly as I possibly can. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.